my name is Boaz, and I'm going to show you how to extend Docker using Python. That's it. <laughs> Why? Why the hell would I do such a stupid thing? You might scream inside your head. Well, because I'm bored, that's why. But seriously, um, sometimes you would like Docker to do things your way, or you would like to add features that are out of Docker scope. In addition to that, Docker has a philosophy saying, better is included, but swappable. That means um, you don't need to install additional packages. You don't need to install additional binaries to have Docker up and running. But you still can replace a specific component in Docker and have it your way. Before we continue, I would like to stop and talk about Docker in a nutshell. When we install Docker, both the Docker host and the Docker CLI are installed on our computers. The Docker CLI is the Docker command line uh, that we are using to run containers. The Docker host is the daemon that is running on the background. Let's see what the Docker host consists of. As you can see here, we have resources that Docker, the Docker host needs to manage. Um, we have data volumes because we want to share files between two com containers. We have networks because we want two containers to uh, communicate each other uh, using the network. Oh, and by the way, I forgot. Um, the Docker CLI uh, communicate, communicates with the Docker host using a RESTful API, which I'm going to talk about later. So as I said, uh, each one of those components, uh, each one of those resources is a component for itself and Docker needs to manage the, all those. But that's not it. We also have three, three processes that are running and are combined inside the Docker host. Uh, from bottom to top, we have RunC. RunC was integrated in Docker from version 1.11. Uh, it is the de facto tool to run containers. Uh, it it implements the runtime specification that was written and uh, specified by the Open Containers Initiative to have a one standard and one way to run containers. On top of that, we have ContainerD. Uh, ContainerD manages uh, containers lifecycle. Uh, it takes uh, an image, volumes, and delegate run C to run the containers using those things. Uh, on top of that, we have the D Docker daemon. The Docker daemon is the HTTP server we're using. It receives the requests and does what it does, uh, delegating container D to create containers or stopping them and so on. So that was Docker in a nutshell. Now let's see how Docker allows us to extend. There are three ways to do that. We have the driver, such as RunC, so we can implement uh, our own RunC to create containers in our way. Uh, another way to extend Docker's functionality is writing a plugin. Um, there are three, sorry, there are four types of plugin. There are volume, there are uh, network, authorization, and logging. So for example, if I want to enable Docker volumes to persist across multiple Docker hosts, I will write a volume plugin for that. The last way is the user-facing API. We basically can communicate with the Docker host, and according to, res to the response, we can behave differently than the Docker command line interface. Let's compare those. Programming languages. We can, unless we are writing a plugin, we can use whatever programming languages language we would like to. Uh, assuming all programming languages uh, can talk to the kernel, sending uh, system calls, and um, communicate uh, using TCP or UDP. In the plugin, uh, we need to write 
the plugin in Go because Docker is written in Go and that's how it goes. Complexity. Um, when we are going to write a driver, we need we need to be an operating system ex we need to be a operating system experts. Uh, maybe we sh should know kernel programming because containers are very close to uh, the kernel. Uh, when writing a plugin, we need to understand Docker implementation and interfaces so we can in easily interact with the Docker. Um, however, when we are writing an API, uh, all those expertise are narrowed to a very small uh, set. We need to understand how Docker works briefly. We need to understand its API and how we can communicate with it. And that's it. Um, extendability. Um, it's obvious that uh, the driver is limited by the operating system, the plugin is limited by Docker interfaces, and the API is limited by what Docker exposes in its API. Even though uh, we can do a variety of stuff uh, using the API. So if I can conclude, the RESTful, RESTful API is suitable for most of us. Uh, we can use any programming language we would like to, such as Python. Uh, we don't need any special expertise, and we can do a bunch of stuff using it. Uh, it's very easy. It's very easy uh, to understand uh, what is the API and how we can communicate it. Uh, we can click on this link and see all the references there. So for example, if I want to list an image, um, I can see there uh, a short description about uh, this, uh, the parameters that I need to provide or uh, can provide, and the responses that the, re the, res the responses that I can receive from that request. And over here, um, I have an example of um, a request and its response. So taking that, I can simply write a, a code. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using the request module. Uh, I'm setting a get request to the images JSON endpoint, checking the response. And if it's okay, I'm iterating over the images, printing um, this uh, output and as you can see I get uh, this is what I get um, I have a list of all the image names when it they were create when it was created and its size uh, as you can see it's not much of human readable so let's make it let's make it um, as you can see here I'm creating a docker image class uh, that is wrapping the the image that I get I get from the response response JSON. Uh, I'm yeah. No, it's not working from there. Your yeah. So um, I have three properties here: uh, names, created, and size. And I'm implementing Dunder String here. Uh, Basically, I didn't do much, but just create a Docker image and printing the same output. But I can use decorators. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using also the humanize module, uh, which provides me some API to, uh, I, I provided uh, a string with numbers, and it uh, gives me uh, a more readable, human readable output. So for example, if I use uh, the natural size, um, I get the number with megabytes or gigabytes units. Uh, if I'm using the natural delta, it gives me uh, the time that passed since the image was created. And if I decorate the properties like that, I get that this output, which is much more readable. Um, I can go even further and uh, colorize the output, but um, we don't have much time to go through that. So one of the 
things that I hear a lot is Docker is missing a garbage collector. Uh, what happens, uh, a lot of people are using the same Docker host, um, building their own images. Uh, sometimes the images are huge and uh, they take a lot of space and nobody is using those images. So it would be nice if we, we would have a garbage collector that collect all the old images and remove it, remove them. In order to implement such a thing, we need to know how to remove an image using the API. So let's do that. Uh, as you can see here, I have in this snippet, I have I'm using again the images JSON uh, endpoint to get all the images. Then I map all the images to tuples. The first item will be the score of the image and the second item will be a dictionary representing the image. Then I'm removing all the images and if I unsuccessfully removed one, I would like to have a list that uh, will be printed on the screen and, and saying, hey, I could not uh, remove that images. Um, I'm using, a, um, okay, so, uh, to give a score to Im an image, I'm using a garbage score method, uh, which actually is uh, decorated. I will show you later uh, the implementation. And I'm using a delete image to specify um, a, a very specific score. So if the image is uh, bigger or equal to that score, then uh, I would like to remove it. Uh, I'm also adding to the to my class uh, a new property called ID because I would like to remove the image by its ID. So uh, as I said before, um, I have uh, score criteria. Uh, one of them is time score to determine whether the image is old or not. Another criteria is uh, to determine whether the image is dangling or not. And the are the parameter here, which is score. Uh, tells um, how much to increment the, the image score. So, if, for example, as you can see here, if the the image is too old, then I increment its score by one. The same thing with the dangling score. And in the time score, the first argument is the time uh, that the image is considered to be old. So basically, I'm using a parameterized decorators, not not something new. Um, I also have a delete image decorator that um, is also parameterized with a score that determines whether the image is old or uh, if the image should be deleted or not. Uh, and I'm using here, if, if the image is, uh, is less than that score, then I'm not doing anything. Otherwise, I'm deleting the image and checking its response. And if it's okay, then um, everything is okay. Otherwise, um, the, the, the image details are listed and um, I will print a, a, they will be mentioned in the error message. Um, the only problem here is that I'm handling uh, the response status code and I would like to have a better way doing that. I, 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 I would rather to have an exception and catch it and then handle it. Um, fortunately Docker has a Python SDK that we can use. It's very easy to install using pip install docker. Um, the documents are very straightforward, uh, verbose, and easy to understand. So let's see how we can create a Docker client uh, using the SDK. Uh, there are two ways to do that. The traditional way, which is using uh, the Docker client class, uh, specifying the best URL, the API version, and so on. Or we can use the environment variables to create the client. This method is better if we have Docker installed on our machine. Um, so basically, we just use the from env methods, and we will have a client. And also, it's very easy to uh, list all the images, containers, volumes. We don't need to really know uh, the, end, the API endpoints for that. Uh, so here uh, is an example. I'm using uh, the images methods or the volume methods and can uh, put it inside a for loop and 
iterate over all the results. Um, okay, Docker has something called Docker Events. Um, it's a command line that allows me. Well, it's a not, it's a blocking command line that prints all the events that are occurring inside the Docker server. So, for example, if a new container is created, uh, such an event will be out will be printed on my screen. Uh, here we will see the type of the event, which is container, because the container was created. The action, which uh, is create because because of that and in the actor I will see information like the ID the ID of the container and its attributes like what image the container is using the name of the container and if he, it has labels then I will see all the labels down there too in addition to that I will have time and and also in in seconds and in nanoseconds to determine when uh, that's, that event was uh, occurred and another example is if my container is connect connected to a specific uh, network uh, such an event will uh, occur too uh, will be propagated uh, and the type will be network the action will be connect and in the actor I will have the idea of the network and the attributes will specify which container was connected to that network the name of the network and its type we can use Docker events to monitor uh, our Docker server. Uh, we can send all the outputs to uh, Logstash or Elasticsearch or InfluxDB, then uh, run some analysis or uh, detect problems in real time. We can do uh, even more. We can discover uh, new containers and add them to load balancer or um, um, a I availability proxy or anything else. So let's see how we can do such a thing. Um, well, basically, we have. I'm using uh, the login module because it's very easy to add hooks to it. So I can send it all the outputs or the, the things I am, want to uh, monitor to uh, a third party uh, server such as uh, uh, Logstash. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm using the events methods and iterating over all the events. Here I'm just printing the events. Uh, but I can do more than that. I can create a class called Docker Event. That class will have one attribute called metadata that um, will have the, 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 um, the events attributes as you saw before. Um, we can, and then it will have a method called action. Uh, we will see later uh, what that methods will have um, using the, the actions module. So basically, when when, when I'm um, what I'm doing, I'm wrapping the event inside the Docker event class and calling action. Now the actions could be uh, right now we're just executing logging info. And for each event, for example, container stop. So if the container, if I get uh, an event which is uh, the container was stopped, then this method will be executed. If uh, a container was started, then this method will be uh, executed. And if uh, a different event was uh, occurred, but I didn't specify any different method for that then the no op action will uh, be triggered so what else we can do um, instead of writing a docker file that will build our images we can write a tool that read uh, a python code and will do that for us instead of learning what is docker file and its instructions we can even write uh, a more clever monitoring tools uh, we can write a load balancer for docker and a bunch of stuff that's it <laughs>